mom wonders if she made the wrong decision after finding out her 18-year-old son's girlfriend was pregnant. She posted to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit saying that she recently learned her son was going to be a father but was disappointed in his reaction. This mom is close with Lisa, her son's 17-year-old girlfriend. Lisa confided in her that she was pregnant and that her parents were kicking her out of the house. This mom told Lisa she was always welcome with them, but then Lisa revealed that her son had broken up with her upon learning about the pregnancy. The mom then called up her son told him that Lisa and the baby were going to be a part of their family and that she was giving his college fund to Lisa to help her start a life with the baby. She wonders if she was too harsh on her son. Was she missing something? Many agreed she wasn't wrong for reprimanding her son, but maybe that giving his college fund away was a bit drastic. The situation is definitely complex, and even though her son is 18, he and Lisa are both still children. The son still needs support from his mother more than anything, and there's still room for her to reprimand him for not wanting to support his girlfriend. Communication will be key moving forward as the son and Lisa learn how to co-parent and as this mother supports these two on their journey. What would you do in this situation? A bride asked a wedding guest to leave after he showed up wearing his military uniform. She shared her story to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit where she revealed that the man showed up to the wedding dressed in his military uniform along with all of his medals. The wedding dress code was black tie optional and the bride felt that the military uniform was out of place. She believed that this man wore his uniform to get the attention of other guests. She said that her wedding had over 300 guests and no one else felt the need to wear anything to make them stand out. The bride had had enough when a few guests approached him and asked him for photos. She believes he wore the uniform to be in the spot and make it all about him, which she doesn't think is appropriate at someone else's wedding. People on Reddit were divided on the issue, with many pointing out that military uniforms are considered formal attire. However, others believe that it had no place at a wedding and that it was diverting attention from the bride and groom. Even if the man didn't intend to show off or steal the spotlight from the bride and groom, it was still impolite to break the wedding dress code. For all we know, there was a specific reason behind the wedding dress code. Military members deserve all the gratitude in the world for their service, but all eyes should be on the happy couple on their special day. A stunned woman learned that her ex-boyfriend, whom she hadn't spoken to in three years, left her a large sum of money after his death. Sharing her story to Reddit, she revealed that they had been together almost 20 years and he left her a sum of $700,000, along with a written letter saying how much he wanted her to have that money. The two never married or had children together. Three years ago, they broke up because he cheated and he ended up marrying the woman that he cheated with. The woman is in a new relationship, has a daughter, and is very happy now. Four months ago, this ex-boyfriend unalived himself, and this woman was contacted to inform her that she had inherited a large portion of his estate. The man's wife and parents are allegedly very angry that he left so much of his estate to his ex-girlfriend and are demanding that she give them everything. His wife is pregnant, and they wanted the estate to stay in the family for the child's sake, but at the same time, it was his express wishes for his ex-girlfriend to have the money. Most people on Reddit argue that the woman was entitled to the money and that she should consult an attorney. Because the ability to leave your money to whomever you want depends on the laws of the jurisdiction in which you live. Ultimately, no matter what the wife and parents think, it was this man's final request to have this money go to his ex-girlfriend. Who do you think should have the money in this situation? A pregnant woman ghosted her fiancé after he admitted to proposing for the tax money. The mom-to-be posted to Reddit where she revealed that a couple of months after learning she was pregnant, her boyfriend proposed. The couple later got into an argument and the fiancé said the real reason he proposed was because next tax season he would get more money by filing this woman and their child as dependents. She was shocked by this confession and forced to face the possibility that her engagement was a fraud set up just to help her boyfriend catch a break on taxes. He later said it was just a joke but she felt that he was being serious. Experts do note that married couples have more access to tax deductions and credits, but the overall benefit is nothing extreme. Because of his comments, this pregnant woman blocked her fiancé on everything, 
but not before he could blame her pregnancy hormones for making her dramatic. When she cooled off and contacted him, he called her a crybaby, which sparked a discussion about toxicity in the comments. Many believed that both are in the wrong here. He shouldn't have made the comments, but she also shouldn't have ghosted him. But the bottom line is that this couple needs to learn to communicate amidst conflict because adding a baby to the mix won't make things any easier. Who do you think was in the wrong? A man dropped out of being his brother's best man because they wanted to stick his wife in a second venue with a babysitter. In a since-deleted Reddit post, the man shared that the wedding was for ages 12 and up, but that there would be a second venue nearby with a babysitter so that those with younger children could still attend. He had agreed to be his brother's best man, but learned from his sister-in-law just two days before the wedding at the rehearsal dinner that she and her future husband had intended the babysitter to be there for his wife as well. This man's wife has some injuries that left her disabled, but he says she's a smart, capable woman. The man was left shocked. His sister-in-law said that it was so he wouldn't have to feed his wife or anything and so that he could enjoy the wedding. He told them that if that was the way they were treating his wife, he wanted no part of the wedding. People on Reddit accused the bride and groom of ableism and infantilizing the best man's wife. And unlike young children who need a babysitter, she's a grown woman and she's far from disruptive or burdensome. The way this couple assumed their best man would have a better time at the wedding without his wife is telling of how they thought of her. People with disabilities deserve to be treated with respect and dignity just like anyone else and especially by family. A woman found out that her husband got a secret paternity test due to pressure from his family because of their daughter's darker skin color and curly hair. She posted to the Relationship Advice subreddit where she revealed that she's Brazilian-American, but her husband is Serbian and very fair. When their daughter started developing her darker skin, his entire family made jokes about him not being the father. This mom found paternity test results in his phone and questioned him about it. And the dad revealed that his family was accusing her of cheating and pushed for the paternity test. On a daily basis, they were in this man's ear. He claims he got the paternity test to shut his family up. But he did it behind her back and now she's hurt and angry about it. She feels betrayed by his family who she thought truly loved and cherished her and her daughter. She's also convinced that her husband doesn't trust her and can't decide whether or not she should let it go. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't trust your spouse, the first person you should be talking to is your spouse. There is an expectation that your spouse will have your back, which includes stopping baseless attacks from extended family members. If this dad truly had concerns about his daughter's paternity, he should have discussed it with his wife. Getting a secret paternity test? That might cause some problems when it comes to light. What would you do in this situation? A 16-year-old girl decided to cancel her birthday party after her parents cut a piece of her cake for her sister to eat the night before. She shared her story on the Am I the A-Hole subreddit where she revealed that her 11-year-old sister is the miracle golden child of the family who always gets whatever she wants. The 16-year-old wanted a big party, so she spent weeks saving up her own money and bought all of the birthday party essentials with it. As part of her celebration, she ordered a custom-made cake that she was really excited about. The night before her party, she was checking to make sure everything was in order and noticed a slice of her cake was missing. When she asked her dad about it, he said that her sister had been crying for it and it was just a small piece and her friends wouldn't notice. Rightfully so, she was furious with her father. She was so distraught about her ruined birthday cake that she decided to cancel her party. One of her friends said she was overreacting and now she's second guessing her decision. The parents were clearly showing favoritism towards the younger sister, which is something that can affect the the unfavored child well into adulthood. The unfavored sibling may suffer consequences including low self-esteem, lack of motivation, and depression. And favored children may feel a sense of entitlement that rules don't apply to them. Parents can correct their bad behavior though and hold their children to the same standards. And that includes not eating their sibling's birthday cake the night before the party. A woman wonders if she's in the wrong for feeding a hungry child. She posted to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit explaining that her 13-year-old neighbor, Nina, is forced to live her parents' health influencer lifestyle, which includes abiding by their nutritional advice, getting weekly weigh-ins, and only being allowed to shower once a week. The woman who made the post said that Nina often complains about being hungry, so she has Nina over for dinner three nights a week and offers her showers as needed. At one of Nina's weigh-ins, her parents noticed that she gained some weight, and Nina cracked, admitting 
that she often eats at the neighbor's house. Tina's parents lost their minds over this and told the neighbor not to feed her anymore. But this woman wonders, should she keep feeding a hungry kid? Most people on Reddit agree that she's in the right and even suggested bringing in social services because what's happening could be considered neglect. At Nina's age, teenagers are extremely self-conscious about the way they feel, smell, and look. Putting a child through something like this is damaging to their development and can lead to numerous issues around food and body image as they get older. What would you do in this situation? Would you continue to feed a hungry teenager or abide by the wishes of her parents? A woman brought her baby to a child-free wedding and refused to leave him with the babysitter. There are many reasons for why a couple might want to have a child-free wedding. Now, the normal response to this is to either decline the invite or find a babysitter, but not this woman. In a Reddit post, she described how she was uncomfortable leaving her 10-month-old baby home with a babysitter for her cousin's wedding. So she just wrote on the RSVP that she's going to be bringing her infant anyways, despite it being clearly stated that that is against the wedding's rules. Now, her cousin didn't say anything in response, so she just assumed that the couple was okay with it. And then the baby cried during the ceremony, which is probably the main thing that they're trying to avoid and it started some family drama. Now the bride didn't say anything because she didn't want to start any drama but the other cousins were very upset. They started thinking that this woman got preferential treatment because all the rest of them had to leave their babies at home with the babysitter. Now child-free weddings have proven controversial but they're becoming more common. The Zola First Look Report surveyed 7,000 couples getting married in 2024 and they found that over 79% of them were in favor of having child-free weddings. According to etiquette expert Lisa Ford, if the bride and groom make it clear that they don't want kids at their wedding, it's not a request, it's a rule. The majority of commenters on this Reddit post agreed that she was acting selfishly by ignoring this child-free request. It's in the best interest to adhere to the wishes of the couple getting married. If they say no kids, that means no kids. I'm sorry, but you and your baby are not above the rules. A woman is asking for advice because her husband doesn't know how to be poor. She posted to the Poverty Finance subreddit saying she doesn't know how to deal with him. She pays all of their bills and handles their weekly budget. A budget her husband doesn't even seem to understand, let alone be able to adhere to. Her husband is so bad with money that she routinely ends up having to take the bus to work because he spent all her gas money on needless things. For instance, one week they were left with 150 bucks for groceries and he asked if he could spend 30 of that on a case of Red Bulls at Costco. Understandably, this left her speechless. And when she later told him she's concerned he doesn't know the difference difference between a want and a need, he threw a fit. She says they're constantly fighting about money and she's worried about what's going to happen if things keep getting more and more expensive. And she says she knows what they really need is marriage counseling, but as she put it, with what money? As usual, people on Reddit had lots of opinions about this. But it's hard not to wonder if there might be something deeper at play. People who carry financial trauma, for instance, often try to make up for the lack they grew up with by either becoming a tightwad or refusing to live frugally as adults. And becoming combative or defensive is often a frequent response from people who carry financial trauma whenever they're confronted with money or financial issues. So it seems this woman definitely has the right instincts when it comes to going to therapy. But without the money to pay for it, is there really a way forward for them? Unfortunately, she may be faced with an even bigger decision than just how to get her husband on board with a budget. A woman's sister sent her $50,000 after learning that her family is struggling and the husband is trying to tell her to send it back. He shared to Reddit that he was fired two years ago and his pregnant wife a few months ago had to quit her job due to severe morning sickness. They have been living off of savings and he has a future job lined up, but for the meantime, they're living off credit cards with a baby on the way. His wife is extremely close with their sister, but that sister never really liked him. The sister-in-law scolded the husband for not taking better care of his wife and the upcoming baby after she visited the house and found that it was devoid of anything needed to take care of the baby. And then the sister-in-law sent his wife $50,000 along with the text saying, use this money on you and your baby, but not on that man. The husband expressed that the sister-in-law was trying to make him look like a failure, which sparked an argument between the two. He asked her to return the $50,000 because he thinks that the so-called generosity is just a way to manipulate his wife into thinking that he's a bad husband. Many people online grilled this man, saying that he was completely in the wrong and that he needed to put his insecurities aside, stating that his ego is not more important than his baby. And this man would rather stay unemployed and sink further into debt than let his family step in. This Redditor put it best, saying, You are literally putting yourself a priority over your pregnant wife and future child. She is not manipulating your wife into thinking you are a bad husband. You are acting like one. After receiving loads of criticism online, the man did come around and posted that he would like to apologize to his wife and sister-in-law. It's okay to accept help when needed, especially when it comes to supporting your family.
A woman's friends are furious after finding out that she's independently wealthy and never offered to help them. In a now-deleted Reddit post, the woman says she doesn't like talking about money because she's seen what people will do for money. Her parents died when she was small and left her a trust fund, so she had a very privileged upbringing. But she was also raised to be frugal and grateful for what she has, and she's never flaunted her wealth. But that was no match for a friend who decided to rifle through the private documents on her desk and saw statements for her trust fund and investments and became furious about it. And soon the other friends gathered at this woman's house that night were furious too, both because she never told them that she had money and because she's never offered to help them financially. And she's since been flooded with angry messages and even demands that she pay off their student loans. Her husband is adamant that she owes nobody anything, especially given the invasion of privacy. But her friends have completely iced her out of the group until she can pay her fair share. By which I guess they mean pay for everything, including their student loans. Her post sparked quite a debate about what wealthy people do and do not owe the people in their lives. But frankly, this woman's friends have lost it. It's hard not to wonder if they're projecting their anger over the economy onto their friend. And that's somewhat understandable. Times are really tough. But that's not really fair. There has always been haves and have-nots, and there always will be. This woman isn't some car cartoon villain crushing the working class while she twiddles her handlebar mustache simply because she was orphaned as a little kid and got her parents money. And in the end, all these friends really did was just prove her point about why she chose to keep her wealth private in the first place. A mom sent her autistic daughter to school in white pants during that time of the month to, quote, teach her a lesson. And she's been accused of abuse after posting to Reddit about her tough love. The woman wrote that her 14-year-old daughter has terrible hygiene, especially during her monthly cycle. And she's repeatedly warned her daughter that her hygiene habits are inviting bullying at school. But she says her daughter has ignored her warnings. It's become a constant fight, so this mom decided to resort to drastic measures. And unsurprisingly, her daughter was mercilessly bullied all day for having stains on her pants. Her daughter came home in tears, and the mom's said that while it was difficult to see her daughter subjected to such cruelty, she maintained that the trick was a life lesson. And in the end, it worked. Her daughter did take better care of herself from then on. But for obvious reasons, Reddit users, as well as the woman's own husband, were appalled and infuriated that this woman set her own daughter up to be humiliated and traumatized. Inducing shame and humiliation is considered emotional abuse by the medical community. And it can lead to lasting trauma, as can bullying, which is very destructive to mental health. But perhaps even more important, understanding social cues like hygiene standards is a very well-known problem for many people with autism. This daughter's struggle with her cycle is probably related to her condition, which makes this game she played not just cruel, but sadistic. For what it's worth, the May Institute, which works with people with autism and other developmental disabilities, suggests using tools like a daily schedule to help kids carry out a daily hygiene routine and positive reinforcement to keep them motivated, instead of, you know, humiliating them to prove a point. Because that's just plain old abuse. A woman on Reddit has had it with her ex-husband's lazy parenting and decided to teach him a lesson. In a post to the AITA subreddit, she explained that she refused to cover for her ex when he forgot their son's recent birthday and decided to expose him instead. A dad not even knowing his kid's birthday is a sadly common theme of gendered issues like weaponized incompetence and women being more often than not the default parent. And for years, this mom has been careful to remind her ex about birthdays and say that all the gifts and parties were from both mom and dad because he simply never remembers. But this time around, she decided she'd had enough and made no such effort. And her son definitely noticed, becoming visibly sad when there was no call from his dad halfway through the birthday party. And when he later called up his father to yell at him, the ex was furious that the mom had blown his cover. There's no arguing that this dad needs to step up his co-parenting game. And people on Reddit were almost unanimously on the mom's side. But experts say this is likely the worst possible approach when it comes to their son. Because it shifts the parenting problems onto the child by essentially ruining his birthday to make a point. Bad-mouthing or criticizing a child's other parent, no matter how much they may deserve it like this guy, can be very damaging to a kid. Because it creates an inner conflict that can be devastating to a kid's emotional well-being and make them feel caught between their two parents. And as a child of divorce, I can speak from experience here. If my dad had been exposed in this way on my birthday as a kid, I would have been crushed and devastated even more than I already was. Now, it is absolutely unfair that this mom has to keep running interference to make sure a grown man remembers his own child's birthday. But there are other ways to go about this. Her kid is going to find out his dad's a bad parent eventually anyway. He doesn't need to have his birthday ruined to do it. And being used as a pawn for his mom to teach his dad a lesson? Sorry, I don't care what the yahoos on Reddit say. That's not not okay. Let the kid be a kid and enjoy his birthday.
A couple was left blindsided when their share of a 40th birthday dinner came to $1,100. Yes, inflation was on the menu. <laughs> No? Okay. The Redditor and his wife were going out with a bougie couple with upscale taste, so they expected it to be an expensive celebration. But not like mortgage payment expensive. It went the typical way. The birthday boy's wife paid for everything and then figured everyone would settle up later. And the couple expected their share would be around $300 or so. Boy, were they wrong. The total tab split between 13 people ended up being $540 a person. And the couple felt like they should have been warned ahead of time that it was going to be that expensive. And many on Reddit agreed. The restaurant had a very expensive prefix menu. Menu, and the itemized receipt revealed that people had ordered several bottles of very expensive wine on top of it. But this couple had only had two cocktails each, which meant their share actually only came to $666, more than $400 less than they'd been asked to pay. But this whole debacle, like most restaurant bill problems, could have been avoided if people were just more comfortable talking about money. In fact, many etiquette experts say that discussing all of this beforehand is the only right way to handle bill splitting situations. And many suggest that hosts in particular should initiate these conversations with friends. Especially in situations like this where they know it's going to be very expensive or there's going to be a huge disparity in alcohol consumption. It shouldn't be considered gauche or unreasonable for someone to simply say, hey, I can't afford this. And being willing to just discuss this stuff ahead of time avoids all the awkwardness and in some cases can prevent people from being excluded simply because they have a smaller paycheck. So let's just all start speaking up more. Life is hard enough without needless drama from restaurant bills. A woman online is wondering if she was wrong to not help her boyfriend save face at a group dinner he couldn't afford. In a Reddit post, she said that she and her boyfriend Ben are from very different income brackets, and he struggles with wanting to treat his girlfriend to things that aren't within his means. He accused her of emasculating him when she wouldn't let him pretend to pay for a recent dinner with her friends, which she thought was pretty absurd since she knows he couldn't afford the dinner, and because she felt like the whole thing arose simply because he wanted to compete with the other men at the table. So now he's embarrassed and she thinks he needs to get over himself. But their tension isn't really surprising given that heterosexual relationships where the woman makes more money than the man are statistically way more prone to drama. Studies have shown that relationships with a female breadwinner are 50% more likely to end in divorce, and men who aren't breadwinners are also far more likely to cheat. Why? Well, as you can probably guess, psychologists say it often comes down to old stereotypes and stigmas about how men are supposed to be providers for their partners and children, not the other way around. Yep, patriarchy strikes again. Ben and his girlfriend are just another example of how gender standards cause trouble for both sexes, not just women. Hopefully over time, men will become more accepting of female breadwinner relationships, because today's economy is hard enough without worrying about old, outdated standards. A woman is furious after learning the creepy baby name her ex and his girlfriend gave their new daughter. The woman took to the AITA subreddit after calling her ex spineless over the name. She explained that her daughter was the result of a drunken hookup 10 years ago, but since then she and her baby's father have maintained a friendly co-parenting relationship. So when he had a new baby, she took their daughter to meet her new sister. But things took a wild turn once the baby actually arrived. The woman discovered that the dad and his girlfriend had given their new baby the exact same name as her sister. I got nothing. I'm just gonna let this cute little guy speak for me. The new girlfriend didn't even seem to register how weird it was, or at least she pretended not to. But the father wouldn't even make eye contact with his ex. And then suggested that his 10-year-old daughter go by a nickname to avoid confusion. Unsurprisingly, the mom shut that down immediately. And then the girlfriend had her kicked out of the hospital for being disruptive. And they kick her out of the hospital for being crazy. Of course, the most likely truth of the matter is obvious. The new girlfriend is jealous and is trying to undermine this relationship with his previous daughter in the most unhinged way possible. Of course, new part partners being jealous of their stepchildren is a completely normal thing. But handling it like this? Yeah, boy. And more importantly, experts say getting over that jealousy is essential if a blended family is to have any stability whatsoever. Hopefully someone can talk some sense into this new mom, because neither child deserves all this drama. <laughs> 